Hello everyone, welcome to Study IQ. So we will continue our discussion on history. We have completed up to 1947. Okay, so that part anyway we have done. So in this session, uh, we will be talking about Rajaram Mohan Roy and we'll talk about different uh, parts of socio-religious reform movements during 19th century. So I'll start with Rajaram Mohan Roy and we'll be talking about Brahmo Samaj and the ideas of Rajaram Mohan Roy in detail in this session. Then we will try to understand the ideas of Sir Saida Ahmad Khan in the next session. And then we'll also talk about Wahhabi movement in one more session and uh, Arya Samaj. All those things will be covered in different sessions. Okay, so here uh, we're going to start with uh, Brahmo so much or uh, uh, the ideas of Rajaram Mohan Roy. So this session is all about Rajaram Mohan Roy. Now when we talk about the social reformers during 19th century, the first thing that we need to get into is actually you'll have to understand the social problems or the problems of Indian society during 19th century. So when you try to understand the problems in Indian society during 19th century, we'll have to classify it as there are certain general problems that Indian society was witnessing at that time, like, uh, you know, gender discrimination, gender discrimination. Okay, and then uh, educational system. That is one of the main problem. It was very poor. It was very pathetic. It was not updated. Rather, it was completely outdated, whether it is uh, Hindu system or it is uh, Islamic system. <coughs> Hindu educational system it was not updated perhaps from Gupta period onwards and when we talked about Islamic system I've told you we have already done this discussion when we discussed about reforms in education okay I've told you that uh, uh, when Mughals came it they introduced a new system but the problem is uh, what was modern in 13th and 14th century is now not modern we are in the 19th century the problem was it was not updated okay so these are general problems that we are talking about gender discrimination education system was a problem and then uh, superstitious beliefs okay so education system superstition now why I'm talking about all these is because uh, the efforts of Raja Ram Mohan Roy is all connected to you know all these uh, problems in Indian society. So he'll do something for education, he will do something for the improvement of women, he will also take up some specific issues like uh, you know Sati etc. So when we talk about these are general problems, okay, now when we talk about specific problems, uh, among the Hindu uh, religion, especially in the upper caste, okay, uh, in northern part of India, Sati was a problem. Then widow remarriage was again a problem. Widows are not allowed to remarry. A female widow is not allowed to remarry. A male widow can remarry, okay. So that, that was also a kind of discrimination. Anyway, we have discussed about gender discrimination. That is in general, but this was very specific, okay. So like Sati, widow remarriage, etc. And then another issue which was very specific that was in a particular region that is western part of India that is child marriage okay <coughs> child marriage and one more specific issue that I want to talk about is actually female infanticide which was among a particular caste which was seen predominantly that was among the Rajput caste in northern part of India we have discussed this and we have also talked about uh, ban on female infanticide ban on human sacrifice all this during Lord Hadden's time before so I'm not getting into the details of all this but we'll see the efforts of Rajara Mohan Roy with respect to these problems these uh, problems in the Indian society in 19th century okay now when we talk about social uh, reform movements, social religious reform movements, actually there are two types of movements, uh, reformist movements and revivalist movement. Okay, so predominantly when we talk about reformist movement, we'll talk one from Hindu side and one from Muslim side. One from Hindu side is what Raja Ramohan Roy, he was a social reformer and Brahmo Samaj is what we are going to discuss over there. And on the Muslim side, we will talk mainly about Sir Saida Ahmad Khan, he was also a social reformer from Muslim side and we will talk about Aligarh school okay so Aligarh school of thought and the uh, developments related to education and all those things we'll discuss over there then when we discuss about revivalist movement again one we will discuss from Hindu side as Arya Samaj by Dayanand Saraswati and from Muslim side we'll mainly talk about Wahhabi movement so these are the four discussions that we are going to get into from the session onwards so let's start with Rajaram Mohan Roy who was a social reformer and he is known as father of modern India now when we talk about modern what do you mean by modern that you need to have a clear idea about what I mean by modern here 
it's not that uh, he he was uh, he was western okay so western and modern westernization and modernization is totally different so western means you are accepting the cultures of west and you are following or you are using the modern gadgets and all those things you may you may be branded as western but that doesn't make you modern okay see for example uh, if you if you use all the modern gadgets like mobile phones and everything you wear Levi's jeans or t-shirts and you live in a very posh colony having all the modern gadgets cars and everything but still uh, if you cannot treat your baby girl as equal to your baby boy your mindset is traditional although you have all these and all these better life western style of life your mindset is traditional okay so you cannot be called as modern so modernity is all about mindset it's all about rational thinking so if you take it in that way rajara mohan roy was one of the first indian who started thinking rationally who's having a mindset to accept the changes he was also ready to accept the cultures of other religions so he was open to change in that context we are uh, trying to take him or understanding him as the father of modern india because he was the first person among the indians who started thinking rationally who questioned many beliefs in hindu system okay and he was ready to change also okay so in this context is what we are actually calling him as father of modern india and there was always a question that dalhousie could also be called as father of modern india and in fact this question was asked in 2013 mains gs paper dalhousie could be called as father of modern india comment okay so i'll give you the answer for this question after some time after discussing some of the contribution of rajara mohan roy then it will be very easy for you to compare rajara mohan roy and dalhousie anyway whatever comparison you make dalhousie's contribution will stand at the top without any comparison you cannot even make any comparison with rajara mohan roy and dalhousie and i'll tell you the conclusion that you're going to write will make a diplomatic conclusion if you talk from contribution side it is dalhousie who is going to stand at the top it is uncomparable okay anyway i'll discuss about that we have already done a discussion on uh, dalhousie before also here also i'll try to make a comparison and i can convince you that the contribution of dalhousie is unmatched unmatchable to rajara mohan roy so here uh, i hope you understood uh, what i mean by modern and western and you know he has having a good knowledge about modern languages and also classical languages like uh, sanskrit arabic persian hebrew because uh, in his opinion if you need to study the religion you have to read the original religious textbooks otherwise you see this vedas and upanishads and all these are poetic in nature so when you translate not only the meaning will be different the charm will also be lost so in his opinion you have to study the original religious textbooks and for that you need to know the uh, the language in which the original textbooks have been written for example bible has been originally written in hebrew so you have to know and he is having good knowledge about that particular language similarly quran was originally written in arabic so you need to have knowledge in arabic to know quran and islam and vedas and upanishads are originally written in sanskrit so you should have a knowledge about sanskrit and what he did is he read all these religious textbooks quran bible vedas upanishads and in fact he have translated vedas and upanishads to bengali language also we'll come back to that uh, when we discuss about brahmo samaj and objectives of brahmo samaj but here what i want to tell you is after understanding all religion in a much better way he was ready to accept good things from different religion for example you have seen uh, one of the good element of islam as equality everybody is considered equal among islam similarly among christianity uh, the humanity is the element which was attracted rajara mohan roy and similarly from hinduism it was spirituality which was attracted rajara mohan roy okay so he was ready to accept good things from different religion from islam from islam equality from christianity it was humanity and from hinduism it was spirituality which he have find attractive or and he was ready to accept good things and in his opinion the problem with respect to indian society or the people of uh, indian society is actually you don't have good knowledge about other religion and that is actually creating all these problems and forget about the knowledge about other religion you don't even have good knowledge about your own religion accidentally you are born in a religion and you're just following the practices whichever is told to you okay without knowing anything about the religion and that is actually the problem 
uh, of Indian society according to Raja Ramohan Roy. And in his opinion, if you have good knowledge about other religion, you won't criticize the other religion and you, there, that will not result into any religious problems. Okay, now we'll quickly look into his contribution. So we'll start with this literary contribution. Even before we go to Brahmo Samaj or uh, Sati, all these things, we will look into the literary contribution. He triggered a movement that is movement of mind, okay? Movement of mind. And he not only influenced uh, Bengal, he actually influenced the uh, across India, major part of uh, India. And in 1814, he founded Atmiya Sabha in Calcutta. Atmiya Sabha in Calcutta. And in 1818, his friend David Harre actually started Hindu College at Calcutta and he was a teacher in that college. Okay, so David Harre, David Harre started Hindu College at Calcutta and he used to teach history and literature over there. And in 1825, he founded Vedanta College at Calcutta. Vedanta college at Calcutta and he introduced two new subjects that is mechanics and Voltaire's philosophy. See he was actually influenced by uh, these people Voltaire, Rousseau etc who were the pioneers or who triggered French revolution during 1789 because the, those people who were born in 1700s they were actually influenced by these people. So Rajaram Mohandra was also greatly influenced by these people. So here you see Volt, uh, Voltaire's philosophy Voltaire's uh, philosophy and uh, mechanics okay so you can see here this is a science okay so mechanics is a science and this is actually a political science so he's trying to make some changes in the education he's introducing modern science in uh, here you can see political science as well as natural science okay so is this is one of his contribution in education okay he introduced two subjects he also introduced essay writing you know on contemporary issues we'll come to that we'll talk about brahmo sabha or brahmo samaj in 1828 he started brahmo sabha brahmo sabha at calcutta later it was named as brahmo samaj it came to be known as brahmo samaj and people like debendra nath tagore who was the father of ravindra nath tagore and keshub chandra sen took this movement outside bengal and spread this movement especially keshub chandra sen had a major contribution in spreading this movement outside bengal okay and uh, the objectives let's look into the objectives of uh, brahmo sabha objectives the main objective is actually you know promotion of monotheism monotheism means there is single god okay the belief in one god there are different practices among hindus or in different parts of india uh, that is uh, polytheism pantheism etc polytheism means believing in multiple gods okay and pantheism means believing everything as god you see a tree you will worship that you see a river you will worship that you see a cow you will worship you see a stone you will worship so you believe everything as god that is what pantheism so these are different practices which were there among hindus and in different parts of india and different parts of the population but he strongly argued for monotheism so one of his objectives uh, of brahmo sabha was basically to promote monotheism okay so promotion of monotheism he actually translated rigveda and six upanishads into bengali language and he concluded that the idea of one god or single god was actually there in the hindu religious textbooks itself and he quoted from vedas that you know uh, there is only one god and he has no image that is eva eka dvityam that means there is only one god and na pratima asti that means he is formless and he has no image okay so he quoted from rigveda and he tried to prove that it is there in the hindu religious textbook itself and it is a wrong practice that you consider or you worship many gods in hindu system you have many devis and devdas okay and mostly he is arguing that you don't want to have a symbol for worshiping and you don't want idol for worshiping that is actually not there because god is one and he has no image he is formless eva eka dvityam and no pratima asti which is there in the vedas itself okay eva eka dvityam there is only one god 
only one god okay so rigveda 8127 and na pratima asti that means he has no image no image and what he concluded is actually god is one and he is formless he has no image so there is no need of a symbol for devotion there is no need of a symbol or idol for worship okay so there is only one god so the main objective of brahma samaj is promotion of monotheism and the second objective of brahma samaj is you know uh, or uh, it actually opposed idol worship so opposed idol worship now here you can see here and when we discuss about Arya Samaj, so forget about Brahma Samaj now, and I'm giving a statement from Arya Samaj. Consider the following statement with respect to Arya Samaj, or which among the following is correct with respect to Arya Samaj. Uh, Arya Samaj, and I give you a statement opposed idol worship. So, what do you think? Whether it is correct or not, you think that Arya Samaj is a revivalist movement. That means traditional. Go back to Vedas. So you may think that. It is Brahmo Samaj which is opposing idol worship. So if it was if it was Brahmo Samaj, it will be correct. In case of Arya Samaj, it may not be correct. That's what most of the people think because it was a revivalist movement. But that's actually wrong. Even in Arya Samaj also, they opposed idol worship. Okay. So this is common in Brahmo Samaj as well as in Arya Samaj. And you cannot see any idols in any of the Arya Samaj mandars across the country. And secondly, if I give you one more statement with respect to Arya Samaj, they promoted inter-caste marriage. Will you accept it? You see, uh, Arya Samaj is all about revivalist, go back to Vedas. Okay, so there is no possibility that you will promote inter-caste marriage because marriage rules in India is caste endogamy and clan exogamy. You cannot marry outside the caste. Okay, as per the rules. But actually Arya Samaj promoted inter-caste marriage there are many other reasons also because by 1872 Universal Marriage Act was passed by Lord uh, Northbrook and after that inter-caste marriages were legalized even if you are going against you know uh, inter-caste marriage you will be punished so it is better to support we, we are not getting into that it is very subjective so I'm not talking about that what I want to tell you is uh, even Arya Samaj also actually supported inter-caste marriage and they also opposed idol worship okay so there are some modern or reformist elements even in Arya Samaj which was a revivalist movement we will come to that anyway okay <coughs> Now, what is the ideology of Raja Ramohan Roy? Actually, the ideology is you believe in one God, so you believe in one mankind. You believe in multiple gods, you believe in multiple mankind. So that is actually the reasons for this caste hierarchies and everything. And he he actually rejected caste hierarchy. He was he opposed caste hierarchy, and but there was no specific movement from Raja Ramohan Roy's side to untouch abolish untouchability or to remove untouchability and for him the cause of untouchability all are rooted in belief in multiple gods multiple god means it is multiple mankind belief in one god means one mankind so solution to the problem of untouchability is believe in one god that will result into one mankind now the keep in mind there was no specific movement for untouchability like in case of sati okay so that's about uh Brahmo Samaj okay and uh, when we talk about some specific issues here uh, we will take about talk about Sati you all know about Sati what is Sati if a husband has died the the widow have to uh, jump into the funeral pyre of the husband and that is actually the practice uh, of Sati which was practiced among upper caste Hindus in northern part of India and Raja Ramohan Roy's sister-in-law also committed Sati and uh, he had made a lot of effort to save many female from the uh, sport and he was able to save two female from the sport along with some supporters or volunteers and that actually resulted in some discontentment among the people and he faced a lot of problems from the society and even from his uh, relatives also and because of his effort uh, finally in 1828 lord william bendick the then governor general uh, uh, removed banned sati okay and sati was declared as culpable homicide not amounting to murder in 1828 anti-sati resolution was passed anti-sati resolution was passed by lord william bentick under which uh, sati was declared as culpable homicide not amounting to murder and a maximum punishment of 
10 years of rigorous imprisonment was given for those who instigate or compel the female to commit suicide okay so because of Raja Ram Mohan Roy's effort this thing has happened so I hope this is clear now he was in support of female education and he opened schools also for uh, girls from 1825 onwards so we actually stopped in between his literary contribution will continue the literary contribution so the main literary contribution is actually he introduced essay writing on contemporary issues so essay writing essay writing on contemporary issues see the problem with indian literature was full of fantasies and full of stories it was totally cut off from the reality and uh, people don't have access to newspapers at that time not much newspapers was there no indian language newspapers were was there at that time actually rajana mohan roy is the person who introduced the indian language newspaper so what was the first newspaper which was published in india in 1780 the bengal gazette the editor was james augustus hickey then what is the first indian language newspaper that was in 1818 samvad kaumudi by Raja Ram Mohan Roy okay in which language Bengali language so the first Indian language newspaper was published by uh, Raja Ram Mohan Roy which was in Bengali language okay so in in 1821 he published Meerut Ul Akbar okay in which language Persian language I have already told you he is having knowledge in all these uh, languages Persian Arabic Hebrew Sanskrit etc see uh, if this was asked as a question who among the follow who among the following was the editor of Miratul Akbar and your first option is Sir Saeed Ahmad Khan there is a possibility that you'll go for Sir Saeed Ahmad Khan many students until and unless you have read about this and you have a clarity about this even if you read about this you may forget it if you if you have clear clarity about this then only you will go for Raja Ram Mohan Roy otherwise I can tell you that 90% of the student will go for Sir Saeed Ahmad Khan so make it clear that uh, this is actually authored by or edited by uh, Raja Ram Mohan Roy okay then he authored books also <coughs> the precepts of Jesus in English language the precepts of Jesus and next one Tohfat Ul Muwahideen so this also there is a possibility that you may go for uh, Saeed Ahmad Khan so keep in mind Persian in Persian language uh, which means a gift to monotheist okay gift to monotheist so he was born on 22 May 1772 in Bengal and he died on 27 September 18. 33 in Bristol in England so he the, and then this movement actually continued by Devendra Nath Tagore and Keshub Chandra Sen and they spread the movement across India okay so who was the first among the Indians to start social reforms the first Indian who started thinking rationally questioned the Indian uh, religious beliefs few of the Indian religious beliefs and he was ready to accept the good things from other cultures like I've told you from Islam equality from Christianity humanity and from Hinduism uh, spirituality okay and he questioned certain practices of Hindu society like Sati and all he supported women education he started schools for girls after 1825 he started essay writing on contemporary issues he started the first English language newspaper and he started the college Vedanta college he introduced two new subjects mechanics and for Voltaire's philosophy all these things is enough for you to write a very good answer in mains related to Rajara Mohan Roy now the question that I've started in the beginning Dalhousie could also be called as father of modern India now if you compare I've already told you in my opinion Dalhousie stands at the top if you make a comparison so for example if you talk about education he had some contribution of education here and there but if you take it from Dalhousie side we have already discussed about Woods Despatch so which is known as Magna Carta of modern Indian education the government have actually taken up the responsibility to provide education to masses uh, in Woods Despatch okay so which one was standing at the top here so definitely Dalhousie is scoring here and then if you the other thing that you can talk about is Sadi 
But on the other side, when we talk about Dalhousie, uh, see, see, when we talked about Sati, I have told you it is with the effort of Rajara Mohan Roy, it is Lord William Bentick who passed anti Sadi resolution. But when we talk about uh, Dalhousie, uh, during Dalhousie time, a uh, widow remarriage act was passed. And who passed it? It is Dalhousie who passed this act. And despite the opposition from many upper caste Brahmins, okay, so widow remarriage. Act with the support of Ishwar Chandra Vidya Sagar, the Indian who supported was Ishwar Chandra Vidya Sagar. Here, Rajara Mohan Roy is the was the Indian supported, you know, uh, in anti Sadi resolution. But who did it? William Bentick. So here also, in my opinion, Dalhousie score more. And apart from that, uh, you talk about railway. Okay, so if you talk about father of modern India, modern India is like this because of railway and it connected India, it led to the emergence of nationalism, a lot of good things are connected to that. Okay, so there is no need to talk about railway here. So in above everything, uh, railway will stand above all, post and telegraph, PWD, okay, hill stations. Okay, so that's enough to tell that anyway Dalhousie will stand at the top if you just analyze the contribution of these two but can you can you now write Dalhousie could be called as father of modern India you cannot you can say Dalhousie could also be called as father of modern India because of his contribution his contribution is unparalleled there are criticisms with respect to doctrine of lab Santel rebellion and all those things annexation of Avad. we have discussed all those criticisms but let's not get into that here we are trying to uh, understand things objectively we don't want to be an Indian or English when we are trying to understand things or the facts okay so if you are looking only from Indians perspective you may not support an English but here his contribution is actually unparalleled <coughs> now let me quickly write some uh, important points or principles of Brahma Samaj those who okay with uh, whatever we have discussed you can actually skip this part it's all about some of the important principles of Brahmo Samash. If you have any doubt in any of the videos that we have done so far, you can get in touch with me here. You can join this Telegram channel for all my videos. We have done history from 1757 Battle of Plassey to 1947. Around 50, 56, 57 videos are there. We have covered the entire history. So the principles of Brahmo Samash. Okay. One. God is one only. He is worthy of worship. He is prohibited from being worshipped as God or Goddess. Okay, so second point, people of every caste people of every caste or class have the right to worship God okay third point there is no need of a symbol for devotion okay fourth point God is immortal and he never both in the form of a man okay next point salvation is almost impossible without the mercy of God okay next point Saulus immortal next point salvation can only be achieved by giving up committing options next point to love human beings and to have love towards them is the supreme religion last point there is no place for 
idol worship animal sacrifice offerings etc okay so these are the main principles of brahmo samaj so as i've already told you god is only one so promotion of monotheism people of every caste and class have the right to worship god there is no need of a symbol for devotion okay god is immortal and he never birth in the form of man okay salvation is almost impossible without the mercy of god soul is immortal salvation can be only only be achieved by giving up committing obscenes to love human beings is the supreme religion there is no place for idol worship animal sacrifices offerings etc so i hope you understood this so see you guys Thank